So 14.2 second addendum, let's say addendum two. And I'm going to title this uh, reiterating integrals. It may not at all be clear what I mean by that, that's okay. But for an intro, the intro will also be a bit vague until we have a good example. But the intro will say um, often uh, when we're confronted with an iterated integral, or well, let's say when we, we wish to evaluate an iterated integral, we may need to spell badly, we may need to reiterate it. first. So maybe unclear what I mean by that. So let me start just with a simple example. We'll walk through this and then we'll see. So consider the iterated integral 0 to 1, x to 1, cosine of y squared, dy dx. So this integral as written cannot be done. The reason is that we cannot integrate cosine of y squared with respect to y. If we had like a y cosine y squared, we could do a substitution, but as it stands that we cannot do this. So we might just sit here and be like, well, then we're done, can't do anything. But take a look. So ask this question, what can we do? So now, um, just for the record, what we're about to see is sort of an idealistic situation. It doesn't always work. It's just something that can come up sometimes when you're doing integrals. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll look at the R that this corresponds to. So what is the R here? Well, the dy dx tells us that the region is vertically simple. Or let's say the region has been treated as vertically simple. This is because we see the dy dx. So here is R. So what we've got here is the following. We've got um, x and y, oh, we've got x's to the left and the right of 0 and 1. We've got upper and lower functions y equals 1 and y equals x. So this is our r. This lower function is y equals x. The upper function is y equals 1. That's the r. So the question I want to ask is, well, what would happen if we did this as horizontally simple instead. So what if we treated this as horizontal, horizontally simple? Well, let's look at the R again. Just going to redraw it. I'm going to redraw it so I can uh, sort of relabel things as horizontally simple. So now what happens is we have y that goes from 0 to 1. We have a left function, which is x equals 0, and a right function, which is x equals y. Same as y equals x, but I'm thinking of it as x equals now. So under this new treatment here, we now have so um, in other words, as horizontally simple, our y's now go from 0 to 1. Our x's now go from 0 to x equals y. And now we have still have cosine of y squared dx dy. So it's this switch, because if you look at this new inner integral, this we can now do. This makes us happy, because x is now the variable, 
cosine of y is now the constant. And so this now becomes the integral from 0 to 1. Um, we get x cosine of y squared from 0 to y dy. We plug those in. We get y cosine of y squared minus 0 cosine of y squared dy. Um, there's a substitution here which I won't show explicitly but the result is one half sine of y squared because the derivative of that would be one half cosine of y squared times 2y and the 2 and the 1 half would cancel. This is 0 to 1 and so then the result is 1 half sine of 1 minus 1 half sine of 0. So the thing to see here, the point I want to make, is that uh, sometimes we can make a seemingly impossible integral possible by changing the way that we've iterated it. Now again, this is very rare, but we can sometimes render a seemingly impossible iterated integral possible uh, by changing between uh, vertically simple, horizontally simple, or even polar. So I'll do one more example that will demonstrate the polar point. So before doing so, let me note, I'm going to erase the entire screen so we can start with a brand new example. So uh, take a look, make sure all this makes sense before going forward. So second example. Again, uh, let's begin with an integral. This one will go from 0 to 3. From 0 to the square root of 9 minus y squared e to the power of x squared plus y squared and then dx dy. So if you look at this guy, if you look at the inner integral, again this is still not possible and interestingly even if it were dy first it wouldn't be possible. Right, so even if dy first so again, you might say like, well, maybe we can't do anything, but let's ask the same question. What is R? Right. Well, the dx dy tells us this is horizontally simple. So currently R is treated as horizontally simple. So let's draw those, right? Now, before I do one thing I want to point is, just a little note here, is the nine, the square root of nine minus y squared, that's the right-hand function. This is the right function. This is, more succinctly, it's x equals the square root of nine minus y squared, which we can rewrite as x squared equals nine minus y squared or x squared plus y squared equals 9. Uh, keeping that in mind, keeping in mind that it's a circle will be relevant. So here is r. So y in this case goes from 0 to 3. x goes from x equals 0. That's the inner lower uh, limit of integration to the right function, which is the right part of the circle of radius 3. So this thing, this is our x equals square root of 9 minus y squared, which is the same as x squared plus y squared equals 9. So when we look at this shape, this R, we might notice something obvious, is that like this is a quarter circle. 
This would be really nice and polar. So what we'll do is we will reparameterize this, reiterate, reiterate this if you like in polar. So in polar, this is what we get. So our angles, theta goes from zero to pi over two. That's the first quadrant. Then because it's just a circle, it's a circle of radius three. So zero to three, that's really nice. The e to the x squared plus y squared becomes e to the r squared because x squared plus y squared is r squared in polar. Then we pick up the polar r and then dr d theta. So notice it's this polar r that makes all things possible. In other words, it makes the integration okay. So what happens is we evaluate. Again, there's an implicit substitution, rather. There's a substitution here that I'm not going to write the details of. But when we do this, we get 1 half e to the r squared, 0 to 3 theta, plug in for that, 0 to pi over 2, plug um, plug the 0 and the 3 in for r, so I get 1 half e to the 9 minus 1 half e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so I don't want to forget that one, that is not, uh, not 0, e to the 0, so we'll, now everything is a constant though, so this is kind of nice, so we would integrate this, we get 1 half e to the 9 theta, this looks really weird, minus one half theta, zero to pi over two, plug those in, one half e to the nine pi over two, minus one half pi over two. When we plug in zero here, we get nothing. So this is our final answer. So again, um, Reiterating it made it possible. And again, just to really sort of make this point is this, this happens very rarely, but it's something that can happen, um, that can, that can make an integral doable when you didn't think it could be. So that's the end of the addendum.